What's going on guys? Thanks for tuning in on today's video. I'm Gabe and today I'm going to be doing a new reveal of my brand new intake, which you guys can see through the title of the video. It's gonna be the Verum Cold Air Intake. Uh, this is actually a piece that I've been waiting for for the last, call it, month or so. The, if you order this through a certain website that I'll be putting in the link in the description below, um, they're just super delayed with their orders and that's basically one of the reasons that I've been kind of delaying my headers installation. So this was kind of like the last piece of the puzzle. So today I'm actually going to be installing this, showing you guys how to do it because there isn't really any detailed installation video for the Verum intake, nor is there like a review of it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that for you guys. And very quickly before we begin, this is what's going to be coming in your Verum intake uh, shipping box it's going to be coming with the heat shield here the actual intake itself this kind of goes in between uh well i, I imagine it's going to go in between the intake and the actual throttle body so that's pretty important as well here's a tube that connects for the uh you know the cables uh, well not cables but you'll see momentarily um some clamps this is a extended uh bolt I believe this is the actual installation guide so you guys are actually gonna have the benefit of going through a step-by-step -step installation tutorial through a video rather than to looking at the instruction guides here here this is the list of the tools needed which is right here so this is gonna be the plier you're gonna have a 10 millimeter socket wrench um, I have a, a longer one here in case and then a uh, regular flathead screwdriver now there's a second actually there's a uh, fourth tool here which is called the uh, eight millimeter driver socket or torque t15 in the instructions i didn't really see a place for that here at least in my situation because i actually have an aftermarket intake which i'll show you guys in a second so keep it with you guys uh, you may not need it if you have already an existing intake uh, but if you do have a stock intake uh, from the factory i will show you more or less where you're going to have to use that tool all right ladies and gentlemen so this is my 2010 camaro ss this is the vehicle that we're going to be installing the verum intake in and as you guys can see i do have an aftermarket cold air intake uh, this is actually made by spectry this is kind of like a uh, definitely a lower budget you know, budget friendly or type of intake that you can buy literally on AutoZone online or in the stores. Uh, prices, I think, was about 150 bucks. Uh, as you guys can see, that's a very low in price compared to like these uh, that are in the three to 400 area. So um, I'll talk about more specifics about, you know, my review on this in a different video. So what I'm just going to do now is basically uninstall everything. If you guys want to skip to the part where I start installing the Verum intake, you guys can check out the video stamp below. So after we went ahead and removed the factory intake and or the aftermarket intake that you're replacing, we can now actually start removing these clips or these nuts or bolts that are fastening the radiator since it's going to go something like this. It's going to slide in between there. And of course, the cap is going to go right in the middle. So let's go ahead and start. So now that you guys see that the radiator moves, but you're going to start to see that it'll start kind of fitting into place. Now this obviously has to go further down, like this right here, this section has to go right there. Well, I'll show you the positioning later on. So right now what I'm going to do is actually start installing the sensors onto the Verum intake. This little clip here go ahead and slightly take it out here unplug it and something that's very important is that you will be given a set of uh, screws and washers to install this uh, but something that's very important is to keep the factory like gasket or seal right 
and there you go it's a perfect fit so we can go ahead and start aligning the screws and the washers which again come with the kit The next step that is presented to us is to place this heat guard or heat shield right on top of this. So on top like so. And as you can see in the image, more or less <laughs> it's the same. Next thing that we're going to do is actually put uh, this hose right here with the clamps over here onto the actual throttle body so for now we can just slide it in there it's advised to not really tighten it and I, I could see why i mean there's really no point right now so now is where the fun begins and we're actually going to start installing the actual varum intake in between the radiator and the actual valley here it's going to be something like this oh you could see that this might be a little bit difficult because of the hose piece over here. So this screwdriver here is just going to allow us to kind of make way for the actual piece here. Because what seems to be the issue here, it's not so much going down, it's the space this way. There we go. Slowly but surely, ladies and gentlemen, slowly but surely. Okay guys, so I have good news and bad news. <laughs> the good news is, is that I was actually able to go ahead and position it correctly. The bad news, and there's actually quite a bit, um, is that I didn't really capture how I was able to do that. And I do apologize uh, for my viewers, but what I really did was I, I ended up taking out those clamps. And what I ended up doing was kind of coming from the top so i came from the top like this was pointed upwards and i was kind of prying as is until it eventually just fell into place here glide your finger underneath to make sure that there's no space and if there is a space where it feels like it's loose you're going to end up tightening it tightening it either way uh, so what you can really do is just loosen it all the way and kind of just like slide it underneath and then just wrap it around and then go ahead and tighten it and you'll see that it works just fine. I can actually secure it now that it is in place. Now, I actually might move this piece a little bit this way because the hose is gonna, the PCV line is gonna be on this side. So just keep that in mind that you can do that. Okay guys, so I finished tightening these hose clamps. Very, very tight, that's not going anywhere. So the next step now would really just be plugging and playing now. First off, you can actually go ahead and install the sensor here that simply plugs in. Now that we've plugged in the sensor, we've got one more thing to do and that's the PCV line. The old PCV line rested on top of the throttle body uh, right in front of the intake manifold here. It's not the factory one, I believe. Actually, it is the factory one. So as you can see, it goes plugged into there. So you can actually just pull that out. We can just move that to the side here. And ideally we would like to kind of maneuver it where it would fit into, or like that. <laughs> there you go. Now, how you decide to cable manage, I wouldn't want it near this. Okay, so we just finished the PCV line, which is basically the section five, which came after the section four, which section four was just making sure to fit the entire intake into place. Well, the final part is installing the long bolts. Uh, you can install them. That's really to just fasten it to make sure that nothing really moves and that it stays in place. This is really not going anywhere. I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna install that. I might, I'll see how it is, but let's go ahead and just, pretend as if we were just you know for installation and video sake uh, but let's go ahead and start up the car make sure that you know there's nothing wrong nothing explodes or anything like that yes i'm driving with my feet i know i'm crazy and stupid huh doesn't seem to have much of a change um feels pretty normal actually Yeah, 
again, it doesn't really feel that much different. I mean, it's not like it's gonna add a bunch of horsepower or anything like that. feels smooth I'll, I'll definitely say that it, it doesn't seem like it's clunking a lot more than before all right guys so there you have it the intake is still in place nothing has moved all the cables are still plugged in and intact uh, you guys can see the car was driving fairly normal. It didn't really enhance it significantly, uh, nor did it deter the ride as a whole. So that's pretty much the install. Now, before I conclude this video, I'd like to say that this intake does come uh, with this long bolt here. This, so the purpose of this as a whole is to really kind of just fasten the intake or the radiator that way it won't move as much this right here is a clamp that would go onto basically the bumper or the metal area and that's where the original bolt would go that way the radiator wouldn't move so when you install this obviously this becomes kind of useless right so what they want you to do is they want you to flip it around face outward and use this bolt to basically do the function that this was doing before the only problem is is that there's this little piece right here this little plastic piece but that's part of the radiator that kind of obstructs this piece from going backwards you try sticking it in and it'll keep popping out because of that little piece right there so i've kind of come to terms that i don't really need it you could probably sand it this piece a little bit or just remove it as a whole that way you can actually fit it. Slide this over here and that would kind of, you would put it like this, that way it really wouldn't move at all. On this side, which is where the uh, heat guard is, that way the intake won't melt, <laughs> it covers it completely. So uh, there's some flaws with this uh, intake setup. That one being the biggest one that you can't really they don't give you the pieces to really fasten the entire radiator and the intake as a whole. And, you know, even then it looks kind of strange to do it in that manner. You know, it doesn't look very presentable. As a whole, it looks good. It looks good. I like the concept of, you know, as more air starts to channel through the grill, it feeds it into the intake and then it goes through the, obviously the radiator and it just goes into the engines to apply some cooler air. That's a very cool concept. When it comes to, uh, you know, risk reward, you know, what are you really getting for your money? I don't know if the Verum really is worth $340 now that I've actually installed it and now that I have like these little nuances here. Well guys, there you have it. That is the first impressions and the install of my Verum intake, which I've wanted for quite some time. And, and you know, now that it's here, I'm kind of like thinking, eh, you know, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's wait for the headers and everything to go on, see how it kind of plays a role in that. Guys, if you found this video informative and entertaining, go ahead and like this video. It really helps out with the algorithm. This actually is one of the only videos that has a Verum installation, so it'd be very helpful if you guys could go ahead and share this video. And if you guys have this intake already and you're just stopping by, go ahead and comment your experiences with it. What should some people in the comments section below look out for when they're installing it or just owning this intake what should they look out for and guys don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you guys found my content enjoyable uh, as a whole you know we're almost at 5,000 subscribers we're actually almost at 4,000 5,000 is the goal for this year so go ahead and subscribe guys don't forget to hit the notification so you don't miss any of my videos my how to's my reviews my vlogs thank you so much for watching this video and I will catch you next time when I install the headers